What I want to talk to you about today is a fairly personal uh, reason why I've come to be uh, getting into the aged care world uh, and re retirement planning, why that's, why that's important to me. About six years ago, uh, my, my grandparents both fell ill around about the same time. Uh, my grandfather uh, had uh, Parkinson's disease uh, and my grandmother was quite ill at the time as well. Um, unfortunately, a year later, my grandfather had passed away and uh, that left my grandmother uh, still quite ill, uh, with my mother being the major carer. <coughs> and, um, you know, I saw all this sort of going on and, and mum sort of asked me a few financial questions about how to help them out and um, I, you know, I gave them the answers for that and that sort of thing. But um, So what I found is I found myself looking at you know, the aged care facilities and what was out there and really digging deep into what I knew about retirement planning and the aged care world and, and uh, I found it very confusing myself, to tell you the truth. There was a lot, there's a lot out there, there's a, there's a lot of information out there and um, I couldn't imagine what it would be like for someone who doesn't have a bit of a financial background trying to navigate their way through that world. So, so sadly, uh, in th that, that portion of my life was pretty sad, to tell you the truth. There was my grandfather passed away, my nan then got dementia, and then a year later my father passed away. So I had a really three, very, three very, very uh, bad years, um, and I found that at the age of 38, uh, I was the oldest male in my family unit, so which was pretty uh, confronting. Um, and that's probably the main reason I, I really decided to get dig further into this um, uh, this area, because I think there's a real need for people to be, you know, uh, specialists in this area. And and, and uh, as you've heard. There aren't that many specialists in the aged care area, so I've sort of d dedicated my uh, last two or three years to becoming a specialist in that area. Um, so anyway, so basically, my mum came to me with the, probably the biggest question, the financial question that we all may face, and that was, you know, should we sell the the grandparents' home, um, which is a massive decision and it has a lot of implications. Not only did, had a lot of implications not only for them and funding their time in aged care and their time in, uh, and, and actually possibly entering an aged care facility, but it also has implications on uh, the family beyond that. And that's, that's something that I've learnt um, going through that experience in the last six years. Um, so looking at that, I realised that the de decision, it, it's not just a financial one, it's, it's very much an emotional one. And I think um, you know, finding someone that can help you with that emotional journey is quite important. Because when you're emotional, as you know, you can make really bad decisions. Um, and that's what I found. People were rushing into you know, the decision of wh whether to sell the family home, that sort of thing. And you know, a lot of people really don't know the answer. I mean, if you don't have a financial background, you don't know what the costs of aged care are. You don't know what, you know, what sort of money you're going to need in retirement. It's really, hard to, it's really hard to determine whether or not you should sell the, fam the family home, which, as I said, is the biggest decision. So that's where um, advice is really, really important at that time, at, at that stage, to actually seek someone out that can look over the whole situation, not just the retirement planning side of it, but the aged care side of it, and understand all that and how it works. And it's forever changing, as a lot of the uh, people here can tell you, that the practitioners in that area can tell you it's changing all the time and will continue to change. So I think it's, it's important to keep on top of it. Um, and that's, that's what I've tried to do uh, you know, un under my new company, it's really a BMK Financial Services. I found that when I was working for others I wasn't able to, uh, to sort of you know, follow my ideas, so to speak, so that's why I've gone out my own. Now, one really important thing, and, and this is really the, the key to the, what I'm talking about today, is capital protection. Because I think if you don't protect your capital, uh, there's no point going out seeking the best return. You know, to me, it's a really pointless exercise, and I find that the industry today is too focused on uh, what is it you return, what's the cost. You know, you see those ads with the industry super talking about how much it costs. You know, nothing against those funds; they're great funds; they do a good job. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not just about cost; um, it's not just about performance. Um, and, and I think not enough people are speaking about capital protection. I think that's a really important element that most people are missing and it really is that should be the foundation of any good financial plan. Um, and that's pre and post retirement. So pre-retirement uh, you really need to be looking at 
things like your insurance. You know, before you retire, you need to be insured because if you don't protect your capital now and something untoward happens, which it does as you get older and health deteriorates, uh, it can change your life and it can change your whole family's life. Um, so I think that's a really important thing to consider. So, so really getting to the point, you know, with the experience that I've had um, in my own personal life, it's made me really think about the capital protection issues that are out there. So, so as I said, you know, all these all these issues don't just affect you; they affect family long term. They affect beneficiaries, and I think we ne we really need to think about this more broadly than you know how much can I make on my superannuation. And that's I think people are too focused on that. They're too focused on you know what's it going to cost me. It's it really is. Um, it should be a second and third consideration. Um, but look, the things I want to talk about today are capital protection tools. Um, so I just the timer on here so I know where I'm up to. Capital protection tools. So I'll just summarise um, some of those tools that I use in my business and have used for quite a while. Um, first one is annuities. So some people may have heard of annuities, some people may not have, um, but annuities, uh, if you've been a, a, in the government workforce or a teacher or something like that, you might have had a defined benefit scheme. Now a defined benefit scheme is similar to an annuity. It pays you a fixed amount of income over a fixed amount of time and essentially you don't have capital that's at risk. So if you've got an account-based pension uh, that's in a standard uh, investment, it would generally, if it's, it would be exposed somewhat to the share market. And if you're exposed to the share market, you're at risk. Um, so I think we need to have a conversation about, you know, what's out there that I, that I can do that's not risky, you know? And, and that may not make up your whole uh, retirement plan, but it, it should make up part of your retirement plan and you at least should know what's out there. So let me start. I'll just grab the. Sorry. So I just wanted to start um, with annuities. And there's quite a few of these different things that are available, and I've found that through talking to my clients and other people out there, they're just not aware of these things. So I'd like to go through them today. So annuities, there's, there's essentially three types of annuities. One is a fixed term annuity, and essentially uh, people use those for specific purposes. It, to me, I, I can classify it a bit like a long-term term deposit. Now, when you put your money into an annuity, you put a fixed amount of cash into it, you get a fixed amount of income out of it over a fixed amount of years. So it's very, very succinct, it's very, very predictable. Um, and it's not market linked, so it's not, you're not exposing yourself to the share market at all. Uh, and some people use those for specific purposes. They might have a specific thing they want to do. They might want to spend five or ten thousand dollars a year on holidays. You put your money into an annuity. You get that five or ten thousand dollars each year for a holiday. At the end of it, you get your two hundred thousand dollars back, whatever it is, and put it back in your pocket. So that's a fixed-term annuity. Then you've got a lifetime annuity, which a lifetime annuity. People are afraid of these things because in the past, a lifetime annuity meant locking your money up and I can't get it back. Well, that's changed now. Lifetime annuities have a thing called a liquid lifetime. Now, a liquid lifetime annuity, um, basically you can put your money in there and, and for the first 15 years it's treated a little bit like a fixed term annuity. So you can actually get your money back after 15 years, depending on the age you put it in there, and I'll discuss that, I won't go into that now, but um, depending on the age you put it in there, but if you're 65, you put it in there for 15 years at, at age 80, you can get all your capital back and you can have a set amount of income between 65 and 80. Um, now, now, if you don't have a lot of money in retirement, it may not be the solution. You may not. You may need to accumulate a bit more. But if you've got enough, I mean, annuities are really, I think, you know, something you really should consider um, because there is there is very very little risk. Another one uh, to do with aged care is called the care annuity. Now, a care annuity is specifically developed for people going into aged care. And it's like a lifetime annuity. It gives you a fixed amount of income over a fixed period of time, and you can keep it for your whole life. So when you start it, when you go into aged care, but you can't do it with superannuation money. So the other two you can do with super, super monies. This particular one you can't do with superannuation monies. It has to be non-super money. Um, it, it provides regular payments uh, for lifetime. And these payments also can be indexed, by the way, so they can go up and keep up with inflation. Um, and you can, you can use just the income or you can use some of the income, some of the capital. So they're very, very flexible. Um, so what you can use that for, if you know what your care fees are going to be up front, you can say, well, I, you know, I need 25000 or whatever it may be per year. 
that annuity will pay for that and the rest of my money will go to having fun, you know, and enjoying retirement and, and whatever it may be, or just, you know, having those extra services in the, in the aged care facility. Um, so that's basically the three main types of annuities and that's probably the main one that I use as part of capital protection for my clients. Now the next one um, is called capital and income guaranteed funds. Now not all, not all companies have these sorts, sorts of funds um, but they are available, available out there. Now essentially what this is, it protects all your savings, it protects all your contributions. Now it also locks in gains, so if you, let's say you put in $300,000 today, in two years time it'll lock in, and, and say it's risen to $325,000, it'll lock in that gain of $325,000. You can't go below that. So it locks in your, your capital. Um, it's a great product and I, I think not enough people are using these sort of products. Um, there's also protected growth guarantee which locks in gains annually. So. One is built for a shorter term, so the first one is built for a six to eight year term, the second one's built for a 10 to 20 year term, um, and they lock in your gains. And what the, the beauty of it is you're, you still can have exposure to the share market with these funds, so you can still get considerable growth on your money, but you're locking in the downside. So as we know with the GFC, wouldn't that have been a great thing in hindsight for us to be able to lock in the downside? <laughs> Now obviously these particular funds is a bit more of a cost involved, so there might be, mightn't be a fund you want to be in all the time. Um, when the market's rising, well you might want to pay that extra cost. But if, if we know that the market's going to fall, and you know, the only inevitable thing about the share market is it will rise and fall, um, we need to think about that. And I think currently the, the industry isn't thinking enough about the fact, a known fact, that the market will fall again. We know that's going to happen. So let's, let's be smart about it and prepare for it. And that's what capital protection does. So that's, that's two types. And the third type of capital, of uh, protected funds, is the retirement guarantee. So again, it's a guaranteed retirement income. You're locking in your gains annually. Um, it has two strategies, so you can use a defensive strategy or a balanced fund. But it locks in your gains. So as, you, as your money rises, you can lock in a, a base level and not fall below that. Now, too many people uh, lost money in the GFC and after seeing that, I really think we, we need to start to look at these funds you know, more closely. And I think you know, we really should have some of these funds as part of our, part of our investment. Uh, so they're, they're the, the capital, sort of capital guarantee type funds and the ones you can lock investments in. There's also other things, so if you're in a self-managed super fund and you trade shares for example, an important thing to consider there is dividends. Now this isn't a capital guarantee, but what dividends do, if you look at dividend paying investments when you've got a, a direct share portfolio or in a self-managed super fund, they, they help you with the downside. So, so as, sorry, as, the market, as the market falls, dividends, sorry, yeah. that's right, yeah. the, Thank you. Uh, as the market falls, uh, the percentage of dividends generally rise. So, for example, um, in the height of the GFC, bank shares were paying 10 and 12 percent dividend. Now they're only paying about 5 percent. So that's an important fact to remember if you're a share investor. Um, you know, looking at that and saying, well, where is my money invested as the market falls the other way? So another thing, we've only got a couple of minutes to go. I'll just quickly get into it. There's other products out there that allow you to protect the downside. So you can take a, a, a fund that, yeah, it's, um, you know, rise, like any other balance fund or growth fund, it'll rise when the market rises. But it also has a, a capacity to have what they call an option to, um, to protect the downside. So as the market falls, you're still making money. So there are products out there that will do that for you as well. Usually a little bit dearer, but they're available. Now, just to wrap up, um, I've, I've missed a couple of sections, but the most important thing I think for capital protection is strategic advice. Getting strategic advice early and getting it through the right provider is really, really important because if you don't get that strategic advice, you're going to have someone sell your product. Um, it's, you know, you don't want to just buy any whole product. You know, there's plenty of tools out there to to do the retirement planning and, and do it successfully, but if you don't if you don't get the right strategic advice you're not going to know about that. You're not going to hear about that. Um, as I said, many people don't know what an annuity is and how it works, and everybody should. 
Um, so having the traditional set and forget or index style fund, they work when the market's going up, but they fail when the, the market's coming down. I sort of equate it to, if you're a golfer, it's like playing the whole round with a seven iron. Um, you know, you'll get to the end, but you're going to get a very average result. Um, <laughs> so, you know, if you want the full bag of tricks, if you want all the tools available, see a senior financial uh, planner and a specialist in the aged care retirement planning area and they can help you with all these things and they can also help with all the costs and you know uh, managing the cost and budgeting you know the budgeting that you'll need to do as you transition from retirement into aged care so that's about that's about it from me so um, thank you very much uh, for listening thank you